presents I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue, the antidote to panel games. At the piano is Colin Sell, and your chairman is Humphrey Littleton. Hello, hello, and welcome to a brand new, fresh faced and dimple cheeked series of I'm Sorry I Haven't a Clue. Today we find ourselves amidst the ancient splendours of Buxton, a historic market town whose natural wonders include its several warm springs, popular with the Romans, its limestone caves, popular with the Victorians, and its Timbrook Taylor, popular with the Normans. <laughs> That's Mr. and Mrs. Wallace Norman of 52 Cherry Orchard Drive, Chief. And if that were not ancient splendours enough, would you welcome on my left Barry Cryer and Graham Garden? <laughs> and on my right, Willie Rushton and the Buxtonian himself, Tim Brooke Taylor. <laughs> and to keep her paws on the scores, please welcome our delightful scorer, Samantha. <laughs> Okay, right, our first, our first round is entitled Double Feature and takes as its premise the poverty of the film industry in this country. Teams, I'd like you please to come up with some suggestions for new films made from the remains of two or more old ones. Graham, will you start, please? Uh, yes, they're going to combine Lethal Weapon with Lethal Weapon 2 and M.A.S.H. to make Bangers and M.A.S.H. <laughs> Tim... Uh, the makers of uh, Tales of the Unexpected and Grimm's Fairy Tales have combined to produce The Recession Will Definitely Be Over by the End of the Year. <laughs> Barry. Van Gogh and Nasty Habit, new film called Nasty Gogh. <laughs> Two. Willie. <laughs> A happy marriage of three coins and a fountain, <laughs> half a sixpence and the five pennies, produces Robert Maxwell's legacy. Any more? Yes, they're going to remake Basic Instinct, combined with the Sex, Lies and Videotape, and call it The Week in Westminster. <laughs> They're also going to combine I'm All Right, Jack, with Lost Weekend and To Sir With Love. And they're going to call it All Right for the Weekend, sir. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to put together The Wiz and Flash Gordon. That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a pre-release, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, right. Doing a film of bread with <laughs> doing a film of bread with Flora Robson and Derek Nimmo. They're going to call it a rather tasteless ham sandwich. <laughs> right at the end of that round, Tim Brooke Taylor has sixty-three, and the others, <laughs> the others have yet to score. And now to a complicated round called One Song to the Tune of Another, in which team members are asked to sing the words of one song to the tune of another. That means they should sing the words of one song to the tune of another. Words of one, tune of another. <laughs> sing them. Okay. Take some time to explain, but it's just as well to get the hang of it before we start. And as we're the guests of the Buxton International Festival of Music, it would be a wasted opportunity not to take advantage of the many world-class orchestras and accompanies currently performing. <laughs> but what's one more wasted opportunity? So... <laughs> so at the piano, here's Colin Sell. Graham, I want you to sing the words of making whoopee to the tune of the Blue Danube. <laughs> another bride, another June, another sun, honeymoon, another season, another reason for making whoopee. 
a lot of shoes, a lot of rice. The groom is nervous, he answers twice. It's really killing that he's so willing to make whoopee. Picture a little love nest down where the roses cling. Picture the same sweet love nest, think what a year can bring. He's washing dishes and baby clothes. He's so ambitious, he even sows. Willie, your words are of any old Anne to the tune of Climb Every Mountain. <laughs> you won't notice it. Where's it going? Barry, now you're going to sing the words of Elvis's Love Me Tender to the theme tune from The Archers. <laughs> love me tender, love me sweet, never <laughs> let me go. You have made my life complete, and I love you so. Love me tender, love me true, all my dreams fulfill. For my darling, I love you, and I always will. <laughs> Do you think a jacuzzi's viable, Caroline? <laughs> And, and finally, Tim, now you're going to sing the words of One Man Went to Mow to the tune of Je ne regrette rien. One man went... Can we start again, Colin, when we have a tune? I thought you had. <laughs> One man went to mow. <laughs> he went to mow a meadow. One man and his dog went to mow. Dog, I went to war, I made all three men. <laughs> they went to war, I made all trois hommes, deux hommes, et un chien. That's the end of my show. Ready when you are, Colin. <laughs> the piano's caught fire. <laughs> OK, we're going on to our next round now. It's entitled Sound Charades, and it's similar to the standard version in which players are expected to mime the titles of well-known films, plays, books or TV programmes. But in, in our version, uh, panellists are permitted the use of their mouths. <laughs> right, well, now, uh, Tim and Willie, your charade is going up on our laser scoreboard. <laughs> and he... And here's the mystery voice to tell you at home. Noises off. Noises off. <laughs> right, Tim and Willie, is it, a, is it a book, a play or what? It's, it's a, a play and a film. a film, yes. How many words? Two. 
to our knowledge. Two right. words. Two words. Okay, Barry and Graham. Well played. Start so I'm guessing. Two words. Do you think they should start guessing after we've done it? Yes, that's probably yeah. a good tip. <laughs> I'm just trying to hurry things along. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Okay, we're doing it. It's two words. It's a plan. Starting of now. And may I say, in conclusion, <laughs> in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> that my time in Buxton <laughs> has not been wholly wasted. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> the end. OK, start guessing Barry and Graham. Gone with the wind is more than two words, isn't it? <laughs> Not was, if you say it very but quickly. But it wasn't made long before this recording. No. Um, is break in this title? <laughs> oh, I've got it. It's, it's break, heart, pass. No, it's not. Sadly. No. Not that in, in any order. No. no. <laughs> two words. Play and film. Noise is off. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Brilliant. Yeah. OK. Incidentally, audience here in the hall, you can applaud if you think they're getting warm. <laughs> right, your turn to guess, Tim and Willie, but first of all, here's uh, Barry and Graham's charade coming up on the laser scoreboard. <laughs> and the mystery voice at home. Fried green tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. Fried green tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. What is it, Barry? Um, just, just give us the name, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's, uh, it's a film. It's a film. It's a film. And how many words are you going Eight. to say, aren't you? Eight. Thank Eight. you, Graham. Eight. Large card. I mean, laser display. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Waiter. Can I see the menu, please? There we are, sir. Uh, I'll have uh, that. <laughs> are you sure, sir? Yes, yes. <laughs> well, if you well, say so, what's the matter so, with it? Well, what's the matter with it? Well, we do have some red ones, sir. <laughs> Boiled. That's what I want. All right, sir. And be quick about it. I'm not staying here long. <laughs> no, not if you have that, you won't, sir, no. <laughs> the end. OK, Tim and Willie, guess who... I think Willie's got it. No. But it's curable. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, waiter, now he's obviously... Something... I wrote a fish called Wanda here, and I realised eight letter words certainly didn't cover that. <laughs> I've got to get away quickly. Or I'm leaving. Fast um, departure. Um... Fast departure, yes. Fast ah, departure. Yes, yes, yes. Now, there's, we've got red ones, which implies there are other coloured ones, which could be. Oh, oh. Uh, black, white, yellow, uh, green. <laughs> oh, this is green Full. tomatoes. Green. Uh, <laughs> at the Full something title, cafe. Please. I don't think I've ever known Full the Full title, please, exactly. Greens, Something like the... Muriel Smith I'm has green tapatos at the at a leaving fast at the green three. cafe. Well, in a moment. <laughs> pathetic, pathetic. Two. Two. <laughs> something no. and fried green tomatoes and, and the... get at the something quick getaway cafe. <laughs> sad, sad cafe. A fish like Alice. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to give up at this stage. We're being challenged. Nearly enough. We're no hoping way, Robert Robinson no will way, give us two it. points. Grand anyway, I forgot to tell you, Tim, that you only have 30 seconds in which to go. <laughs> so you were out of time about a quarter of an hour ago. Tell him what it is, uh, Barry. Fried green tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. What a surprise. I right. Know. We're going to hurry on now Who's with there? a certain amount of... <laughs> hurry on with a certain amount of relief to a very demanding round entitled Cheddar Gorge, in which the teams are asked to construct a sentence by each of them uttering one word at a time while taking care not to complete the sentence. In order to complicate it unnecessarily, I shall give each team member a word which they must attempt to include. Barry, here's your word. Astronaut. Willie, boomerang. Graham, spud you like. <laughs> and Tim, 
disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> okay, Barry, will you start, please? I start. He was a disestablishmentarianism <laughs> freak. <laughs> and nevertheless, he was <laughs> never knowingly under sold <laughs> in spud you like <laughs> however the boomerang <laughs> won't come back <laughs> said the Archbishop Astronaut <laughs> Archbishop Stroke Astronaut he was so a, a just, just a rumour he, he was a polymath Wanted to be nearer to God <laughs> And Well known For Eating His Spud <laughs> You like <laughs> in any other available yet <laughs> inconvenient yet accessible comma <laughs> vehicle Sounds like the end of a sentence. Sounds like the end of a sentence. Oh. And he's on my team. Yeah. But, <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> when discussing certain matters, never spoke of. <laughs> That's the end of a sentence. <laughs> Okay, right. In this next round, I'm going to furnish you teams with the first parts of well-known sayings which I'd like you to complete. Points will be deducted for correct answers. Now, Graham, here's your quote. If you want a thing done well... Leave it in the microwave overnight. LAUGHTER very true. Tim, here's yours. In Xanadu did Kublai Khan a stately pleasured own decree. But the council built a car park instead. <laughs> Barry, you can't make a silk purse out of... An old washing-up liquid bottle. <laughs> Willie, 15 men on a dead man's chest. I always thought rugby football was dangerous. <laughs> Graham, frankly, my dear, I don't give a... Discount. <laughs> Tim, some words of... Uh, resounding words of Nelson for you. England expects that every man will do his... Flies up. <laughs> Even if they've only got one arm, they still expect... <laughs> OK, Barry. Barry, Dr Livingston, I presume. No, Jeremy Beadle. <laughs> Willie. T'was brillig and the slithy toves did gar and gimble in the wave. John Cole, BBC News, Westminster. <laughs> OK, <laughs> let's hurry on <laughs> to a round entitled Good News, Bad News. The good news is that I can finish it by doing this on my horn, and the bad oh, news is... Oh, on your is... horn. Oh. <laughs> and the bad news is that we have to play it at all. The rules are as follows. The rules are as follows. I'll ask someone from one team to announce a piece of good news. A member of the opposing team should then respond by giving the corresponding bad news. So, teams, we'll make a start, but lest you go on for too long, I'd remind you that Samantha's on the lookout and I've got the horn. <laughs> he looks 
such a nice old man. <laughs> Right, Barry. They just... always do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Barry, will you start with the good news? Uh, good news, we've signed up for Maastricht. Bad news, the postcard actually says Maastricht. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good news, be fair, she gives French lessons. <laughs> Bad news. Wrong again. The postcard says she gives fresh lemons. <laughs> Actually, that's what it says. Good news, don't knock it till you've tried it. <laughs> Bad news, I've tried it. <laughs> Good news, there's an EC lemon mountain. Bad news, the French farmers have set fire to it. <laughs> Good news, crepe Suzette all round. <laughs> OK. Jolly good. Right, <laughs> Willie, you're going to start now. Good news. Humph will be entertaining after the show tonight. Bad news. Pity he's waiting till then. Good news. Samantha's performing with the band. Bad news. <laughs> at this moment. <laughs> Good news, you can hear her. <laughs> Bad news, no, that's the band. <laughs> Good news, they sound excited. <laughs> Bad news, that can't be the band. <laughs> the good news is that Humph's playing as well as he ever has. Bad news, Humph's playing as well as he... <laughs> As well, if to prove it. <laughs> I'm not going to play anymore. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh. Do you want your Kenny Ball back? <laughs> All right, then. All right, then. You can start another one, Tim, but watch it. <laughs> Good news. They're privatising the railways. Bad news. The public won't be allowed to travel on them. <laughs> Good news. You can travel with Richard Branson. Bad news in a balloon. <laughs> Good news, the balloons come in packets of three. <laughs> oh, and with my mother present. Oh. <laughs> oh. Your mother's present? <laughs> well, it... <laughs> well, it is Christmas now. <laughs> And now for a round entitled Just a Minim, which is, of course, based on the lively Radio 4 programme, Moneybox. <laughs> <laughs> One team member should sing a song without repetition, deviation, hesitation or repetition. A member of the opposing team may buzz to challenge, but if I uphold the challenge, the challenger takes over. You'll be accompanied on the piano by Colin Sell. Incidentally, in the last series, I revealed that Colin Sell was a member of a number of musical groups during the 60s and 70s, most of which went on to be quite well known after he'd left them. <laughs> Several listeners, however, recall other groups with which Colin was associated. Amongst them are Emerson Lake and Colin Sell, <laughs> Fleetwood Coll, and an obscure Swedish group called Kabba. Anyway... The song is Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree. <laughs> Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree. Okay, let's start with you, Tim. Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. It's been three long years. Uh, day challenge from Graham Bunch. Hesitation. Ready? What, three long years? Three long years. <laughs> <laughs> And for that clever challenge, Graham, it owns you the right to continue the song now. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> do you still need want me if I don't see a ribbon round the old oak tree? Oh, we've had a lot of ribbons. My buzz has gone. Challenge from Willie, and it hasn't gone. We've had lots of ribbons. Not from me, you haven't. Well, yes, well, can't repeat what somebody no, else has. No, we've had ribbon already. What? 
Can't no, he didn't repeat ribbon. Oh, I yes, but it's... Or did he? You can't... I've said ribbon or... Well, I said it. I certainly didn't sing it earlier. <laughs> what, before the show? <laughs> Over the last few years, I think. Not... Three long years. Yes, I've said it about my typewriter. Oh, the ribbon's gone again. I'm... <laughs> I might not have said, oh, the yellow ribbon's gone again. <laughs> anyway, it's definitely hesitation by now. <laughs> Do you remember a family at war? <laughs> Willie, carry on. I'll stay on the bus, forget about us, put the blame on me. If I don't see a purple curtain round the old begonia. <laughs> round. <laughs> Challenge from Barry. Was there a repetition of round in there? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, actually, which I didn't intend to say. I thought I was going to say ancient, but I forgot. It's an interesting technical point that, really speaking, that's a successful challenge, and you should carry on, Barry. But in fact, we've finished. <laughs> um. Well, that's almost as much fun as anyone can handle for one <laughs> half hour. But before we go, I shall just introduce one final round, and this one's called Official Sponsor. Many theatrical and sporting events these days tend to feature the brand names of well-known consumables prominently displayed, and often in a manner that can be distracting for an audience. Luckily, this hasn't affected a show like I'm Sorry I Haven't a BMW. <laughs> Teams, teams, I'd like you please to suggest some titles of shows or events whose sponsors have been a little too overzealous in their advertising. And I'd like you to start, please, Willie Golden Chert and Rushton. All right. Um. <laughs> How green was my Volvo? <laughs> Purcell White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> the Cotton Buds of May. <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock's Tesco. <laughs> and his other big hit, North by Nat West. <laughs> Phantom of the Optrix. <laughs> Reader's Digest presents the complete works of Shake. <laughs> Such as Troilus and Selfridges and a comedy of Harrods. <laughs> a Reebok at bedtime. Dulux and his amazing Technicolor undercoat. <laughs> ICI are also doing ICI Claudius. Riot in cell block preparation H. <laughs> Mother care on Elm Street. <laughs> Top of the Cocoa Pops. With you two, with Bonio. <laughs> Well, teams, that really is all we have. Uh, Trust uh, House Fort Apache. <laughs> Debenhams Tell No Tales. <laughs> the Weather with John Tetley and Michael Fishfinger. <laughs> and Andrew Lloyd Webber's Rivita. <laughs> teams, I really do have to stop you now. Samantha's got the score, so that's all right. <laughs> Join us again next week. In the meantime, goodbye from us all. Tim Brooke Taylor, Barry Trier, Graham Garden and Willie Rushton were being given silly things to do by Humphrey Littleton, with Colin Sell setting some of them to music. The programme was produced by John Naismith. <laughs>